Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to snowy Moscow. Now I'm going to take you for a walk around my home shopping centre Solaris today and see if Russians really do go shopping. Now lots of comments about this that no one's shopping, no one's at the shopping centres, no one's at the supermarkets. Where is everybody? So today we're going to go check it out. It's right behind me. Now this is the main entrance that I choose to come in because it's basically the direct entrance from the metro. You can basically come off the red line train and come in on that lower escalator entrance or you can come in off the buses which is what I just did and come in the main entrance here. You can see how grand this entrance is. So there is basically the bus station side and then there's also the main Kiev highway side which is where all the cars drive into. But you can see how many people are just flooding in and out of the shopping center even right now. So I'm not gonna show you every store in this shopping center because there's around about 250 in here. But here is Modi right where I've just walked in. And then we kind of walk through this middle entrance way or walkway here to the main atrium of the shopping center. And you can see some of the stores here ahead of us now. If we just look off to the left here, here is Golden Apple, which is one of the big perfume and cosmetic stores. And leading up to the holidays, you can see they've already got the tree up here, they've got the sign. There's always some kind of a special in this store, no matter when you come in. And I've actually done a video on one of these locations, so you can check that out on the, on the playlist of the channel. So I do hope just by showing some wide shots of the shopping center, it gives everybody a good idea of the amount of people that basically come in here and are coming shopping. Now, I guess I'm gonna to have to focus on people's bags and what they're carrying to prove that people are really shopping, but you can see just from this main walkway here, the amount of people in here today. And this is one of the rebranded stores here called CR. This used to be cropped. Now the store essentially hasn't changed one bit except for the sign here has got the letter CR on it. So it's pretty much unchanged, but plenty of people in the store here, same branding, everything is completely as is. People going in and out shopping, and then we'll walk on a little bit further and check out some more stores. So just looking back the same walkway that we just came down here, it's kind of interesting, all of these stores are kind of bundled together. This is, or was reserved, now RE. And then there's cropped off in the distance, Sensei. These were all the same chain of stores that were originally a Polish company, which basically sold off or re-management the company brand. And it's now basically fully reopened just with new signage. And Samsung is still here in the shopping center as well. This store's been here forever that I've ever remembered the shopping center being open. It's always on this corner here. It's got a great location where everybody kind of walks in and out, up and down from the car park. There is a few people in there shopping, but there's a lot of places to buy phones in this shopping center, so people won't necessarily come to the specific brand store to buy them. And then from here, you can actually see the travelators that go down to the underground parking. It's absolutely snowing like mad today, so... Everyone that's driven here has all gone to this straight to the underground parking by default. There's a lot of open air parking here, but with the snow coming down, it's just easier and more convenient to park underneath the shopping center. Then you can see this is the upstairs escalators here. Again, Russians are coming to shopping centers. Yes, they are searching out things for the holidays now. It's December, so there is people in the shopping center today. And as we get closer to Globus, which is the big hypermarket here in this shopping center, I've done quite a few videos in here. They're very camera friendly and we'll actually pop in there as well and check it out. You can see the kind of crowds get even busier as we get close to this hypermarket. Now for anyone that's new to my channel and probably hasn't seen videos before, Globus is a German branded hypermarket. It's not Russian, it's German and they vowed to stay here and stay open. Now this store is huge by the way, it has 81 checkouts, which is just phenomenal. And today I would say 
probably about 60 of them are open. You can see the lines of people coming through the kind of regular checkouts here as well. They've also got some self-checkouts on either end of the main entrances. You can see the amount of people coming in and out of here. And again, I want to really point out the amount of people that are in the shopping center today. Now, we are going to walk into Globus a little bit later on, so I'm going to save that for a little bit further on in the video, but they're very famous for their 25 ruble ice cream. Now, there isn't a very big line for it today, probably because of the cold weather, but they've got a little cafe here where they've got coffee, tea, ice creams, drinks, right outside the hypermarket, but very famous for their classic 25 ruble Cornetto or ice cream. And the other thing they've got too is they've got their own cafe here on the other side. And you can see people kind of uh, even lining up to get themselves some food. These are basically prepared food counters so you can get stuff for takeaway. There's even a sit down cafe where you can eat as well. But they've got these hot dogs and classic kind of hamburgers here. And there's also sausages as well. We'll see. Have a look in the uh, glass case here. So these are all the same things that they serve in the rest in the actual supermarket, but you can get them here for eating or for takeaway right from the cafe. And you can see how popular it is. People kind of lining up for the food here. These uh, ham. It's basically like a. It's a hamburger, but it's more of a classic ham, not a uh, like a, a beef patty kind of thing. And you can see they've got a nice sit-down cafe here where you can enjoy uh, some food, kind of before or after your shopping, of course. How about these orange Christmas trees? You guys like these orange-colored Christmas trees here? They're very well known for their pizza in Globus as well, and they've got all these different kind of packages. You can either get it by the slice, or you can get it whole pizza, and they'll put it in boxes for takeaway, or you can eat it right here in the cafe. The actual pizza that I really like is this square kind of, I don't know what they call this one, but square pizza. It's much thicker and more of a deep pan style pizza. But they even have a Caesar salad version one here. If you want to have pizza and feel healthy at the same time. And then check out if you want some desserts. So all of these desserts, by the way, you can actually buy in the hypermarket right behind me. But you can get them here just for takeaway. You don't feel as guilty then, you just have one and then get in the bus or the car home and no one has to know that you bought one. So this is kind of one end of the hypermarket entrance and then there's the other one where we kind of walked by a little bit earlier. But again, these aren't paid actors, they're real people. They're real shoppers, they've got real shopping bags in their hand and everybody's coming out today to do some shopping here in Moscow. So this store might be interesting to a few people. Now, it may look completely unrecognizable at the moment. This was Lush. Now, Lush is no longer in Russia, but they're still kind of here because this is really all the products from Lush. Just the signs disappeared, and that's it. But there is a bit of a rumor that it's gonna be called List instead of Lush. So I guess we're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to watch this space for a future video with the change. And funny enough, right next door is La Ossitan. Now, we all know that La Ossitan used to be called La Ossitan, but they decided just to change the spelling slightly, but it's still here in Russia. People are still shopping. Everything's sort of set up exactly how it was. Even uh, to this day, it's exactly the same store. And then have a look down the middle aisle of the atrium of the shopping center here. They've got a huge, kind of Christmas setup. How cool is this? They got all the different kind of souvenirs and gifts and kind of presents for people, Christmas ornaments, every kind of thing that you need for your uh, holiday decorations for your house. And this is kind of neat. It's right in the middle of the shopping center here. And there's a few people around, but these kind of Christmas markets are all over Moscow right now, so it's a matter of finding something a little bit different and original that no one else has got. And then walking down the other side, there's even more kind of stalls. It's all the way down this middle part of the shopping center here. So people are starting to come now and uh, 
get in the holiday mood, I think. I think just by sort of seeing all these things, it starts to inspire you to want to buy some new ornaments for your tree or some different lights and not get them from the kind of classic kind of supermarket style kind of fair. Maybe kind of find something that's a little bit unique that nobody has. Now, I did want to point out this middle atrium of the shopping center here, because this is really where all of the closed stores are. And they're all kind of bundled together in a way. There's Bershka over here. In the distance is Pull and Bear. And here on the right-hand side is Zara. And then Uniglo. So they're all basically in one place in the middle of the shopping center. So it's kind of a good thing in a way for this center because they're not spread out through the whole shopping center. They're all together. So there's, what, six different stores that are closed, but everything else is up and trading. Now, it wouldn't be a Russian shopping center if there wasn't a Diet Moroz sort of chair set up. Now, I don't know where he is today. He's not here, but his chair's there waiting for him. And then there's a very big tree right here, which goes almost right up to the roof. It's a very big shopping center we're in here, by the way. And there's a lady here putting her uh, child in the seat there to get a photograph. Oh, oh no, not so happy, but she wants to get a nice photo with him. And it looks like the Starbucks, I mean, Stars Coffee is still open here. This is uh, the original location of Starbucks for a lot of years. And then now it's here as Stars Coffee. Pretty much the same kind of crowd, I think. Just uh, a different brand on the door. I mean, is the coffee better? Is it worse? I mean, obviously, uh, coffee drinkers will kind of tell that. I guess you can always judge that by the people sitting here and how many people are ordering coffees. And it looks like Marks and Spencer in my shopping center has people in it. Finally, I found a location that's got people shopping and buying things. The sale. They keep saying the sale, but the shop is the full. So will they close even next year, I wonder? And here at this shopping center, the original Levi's store is called Mustang. Now I'm not too sure Maybe they've got a rebranding of certain stores and not others, but this is the Levi store. All the jeans are in there, all the t-shirts. Not so many people in there, even though they've got some specials running. Now walking around today, I'd really like to know the amount of people that have passed through the shopping center. I know they've got those kind of clickers by the door. I'd be curious what their number is for today because there's a lot of thousands of people in here. I know in different shots, it doesn't look like it as much. But there is a lot of people in here, for sure, you know, walking around and going in and out of different stores. You can definitely feel that it's much busier. Russians do come shopping. And now coming up to the upper level here, there's people around upstairs here. Here's a lot of the children's centers up here as well. So this is Jockey Jora, which is where you can kind of leave your kids for a few hours. Huge activity center. It's massive inside. It has its own cafe in there. So the parents can actually even go and have a lunch or a dinner while the kids play. They can leave them all supervised. But you can even see on this upstairs level, people uh, wandering around. Now, I think it's always a good way to kind of see how busy the shopping centers feel is by coming up to the food court. And of course, this food court has all of the classic kind of uh, takeaway places. This center is very unique too. It has two different food courts. It's got the kind of normal one where we're walking through here with all of the kind of Western brands like Burger King, KFC, and all of the classic Russian takeaway places. And it also has a food market, which has got kind of upmarket uh, food, a little bit more uh, adult-like, I guess you could call it, but plenty of people in here now. A bit hard to judge by the amount of people here, but this food court seats 1,500 people, so. A lot of people can sit down here and have a nice lunch or dinner. And then if I'm missing out on Krispy Kreme, they're still here. It's called Donuts and Coffee. How similar does that box look here on the left-hand side? And all of the donuts look awfully, awfully similar, don't they? The same signage, the same ticketing, the classic glazed donut right there. This is the only one that I really like out of all of these. Sometimes we get the mixed box, but I don't like all these other ones. 
Now, I thought I'd show something a little bit uh, different here with Burger King. Now, you can see the big Pepsi machine here. This is basically self-service. So you get your cup, you fill up your own drinks. It's completely on an honor system. But instead of Pepsi, they have Evnes, or Eves, which is basically from Pepsi, from the Pepsi factory. And it's exactly how it was served at Burger King the whole time. So you'll see on this other side how many people are sitting down here dining. The whole thing with this shopping center is there's a lot of non-traditional shopping that you can do. So you, you could come to the cinemas, you can come to the bring the kids to, to play centers. They've even got a fitness center, they've got squash courts. There's a lot more things than just doing normal shopping when you come to this shopping center. So you kind of make a day of it when you come here. So this shopping center has an eight screen cinema. So not as big as some of them in other shopping centers, but this is still a big shopping center. But have a look, there's actually people waiting for their movie to start to go in. Some people buy some food in the food court and then bring it on in as well. But they've got the concession stand in the back there and then you go through to the cinemas off in the distance. Yeah, I really like my shopping center for all these kids play centers here. This is a smaller one here for the kind of much younger kids but they're either supervised where they've got the, I guess the uh, staff there that sort of help uh, with the kids and play with them, I guess, and get the toys for them. But it's basically a, a drop-off center. So you leave the kids at the front here and then the parents can go off and do whatever they want to do. And actually in this particular place, the parents are allowed in with the kids as well. So they can kind of supervise their own kids playing. So it's kind of good if you want to uh, let them play with some different toys than what they've got at home. But it's very nice. This were the younger, younger kids. Just looking downstairs at the entrance of Globus there, you can see the line now for the ice creams uh, where people maybe finish shopping and they're on their way home. There's a bit of a line forming to get the, that 25 ruble ice cream everybody loves. And I'm really not sure about how the ownership of this works out here because this Adidas store or outlet store as it's kind of got on the door there has been closed now for essentially the last eight months now never fear if you want shoes because right next door is Sportmeister which is a huge department store size multi-brand shoe store athletics clothing uh, all sorts of gym equipment so you don't have to worry if the Adidas store is closed you've got right next door to go shopping now, for everyone that follows the channel, you know I'm trying to get a new camera and I'm trying to improve the camera quality and the filming. So I thought we'd have a quick look at these two models that I'm very interested in getting. Now, the guy that works here, he's talking me out of getting Samsung because he said five years ago they were better models. Now, uh, they're not as good as they were, but this is the one right here. S22 Ultra. Have a look. 75,000 rubles. That's the 256 model. So that's the one phone that I want to choose from. And the other model is Huawei. This Huawei phone has been very recommended to me by many different people. This is the P50 Pro. Now, this is the one that I want to get here. It's not, oh, it's kind of lit up. Oh, there it goes. This one is essentially 70,000 rubles. This is also 256 GB. But the whole thing with this is, check out the cameras on the back here. This is what I'm after, is this ultra wide angle camera. So I'm still kind of torn between the two. So let me know in the comments what you think, Huawei, or do you think maybe Samsung? So I hope we can get a good view through the window here. I do feel like I'm kind of, you know, kind of looking in on people working out in the fitness center, but this is in the shopping center on a weekend. Everybody comes to do workouts. They've also got a sauna and steam rooms here as well. So you kind of do the whole kind of lot. And as soon as you're done, you're gonna skip past the health store right here and they've got the food market. So you can basically work off or 
work out ahead of time and then you can have some food right afterwards. And then you can see from the uh, food market here or eat market, the uh, different kind of feeling to this place. They've got a lot more international food as well, but it's a very nice place. My wife and I eat here pretty much every time we come to the shopping center now, just because we like the different choices of food. We're not limited to kind of the very traditional fast food. And they also have a Thai restaurant offer in the distance there, Siam, Bangkok, which we like their food from there. Now, this is what I'm talking about with the shopping centers in Russia and in Moscow. They've got so much more than just clothes and shoes. They've got a trampoline park here. Again, the uh, kids are all supervised. They've got a big foam pit and a little sort of mini climbing wall. The kids can all come here and kind of let off some, uh, let out some energy, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Then on this upstairs level where all the kids uh, kind of shops are and play centers here, they've got Mia Kubikov or Brick World, uh, Cube World. I don't know how is the uh, better explanation of it or World of Cubes, Mia Kubikov. So yeah, this is essentially the Lego store, exactly how it was and exactly with all the same items in there, exactly the same. Now this store might be interesting to a few people. There is no signage, right? Now, I'll give you a second to kind of maybe figure out what it used to be called. Now, essentially, the only thing that's different is there's no sign up there. This was Mother Care, and it was rumored to be reopening this week, and it has, obviously. I haven't been here for a few days to this shopping center, but they haven't settled on the name yet, and that's why there's no name upstairs or on the, on the glass entrance here, but they want to call it Mother Bear instead of Mother Care. What do you think of that idea, everybody? Mother Bear? Now, does anybody actually probably know Mother Care? I guess that's probably more important if you're maybe a mum or a family, or you've got kids, you probably know this brand pretty well, but Mother Bear here in Russia. And just proving that there is people shopping and eating here in Russia. This used to be McDonald's, but now it's Vukuzna Itochka, or Tasty, and that is all. And even the outside dining area is full, which is not too often. It's a very small store, this. It's not a very big one. They chose not to put themselves by the rest of the food court, which kind of makes it very different to the rest of the shopping center. So, Kuzna Itochka, you're definitely here, definitely open. And have a look, Russians eat food. Yes, and even, what are we now? Five or six months since they first opened, people are still coming here. So as promised, I'm gonna head on inside and check out Globus now. And hopefully the video is not too long. You know, I kind of tend to do longer videos, so I'm sorry. As we walk past another kid's play center here. I think the parents really secretly love this shopping center. You know, they can leave their kids. The kids actually really enjoy these play centers, you know, because especially today where it's snowing outside, it's not a particularly nice day to be playing outside anywhere. So come to the shopping center and hang out and the parents can go shopping. Let's check out the tree one more time as I come down the escalator here. How cool is that? It actually looks really small on the camera, but it really is quite big in real life when you're here. So I thought I'd spend a couple of seconds just talking about shopping trolleys here in Russia and how little people tend to use them. Uh, now, there is a basically a payment system here. So you put 10 rubles in here, it unlatches it, and then it obviously gives you that inspiration to return it, right, to get your 10 rubles back. But what people typically want to do here, and you can see all these baskets on this side here, you get these kind of little hand trucks or hand baskets. Like this lady's gonna do, she's gonna put a bag in there. We do the same thing, we put our jacket in there and we take one of these and do our shopping. So I have done different videos in Globus before, but they've got their own cafeteria or canteen here. It's actually a really big place. It's got the seating just off in the distance over there and then there's, there's about six or eight different ladies that you do your checking out with. But they do all the cooking in the store. Actually, I can smell the pasta and the 
the garlic and the pasta cooking over there. But they've got the burgers right here. And then there's uh, the salads on this left-hand side. And then off in the distance is all of the kind of pre-cooked food. Everything's cooked, obviously, right? I'm gonna keep saying pre-cooked. And have a look over here, the pancakes. These are very nice. This lady, how she doesn't burn her hand. I always talk about this every time I come in here. She's got an absolute skill to do four pans at the same time. And then you've got all the different toppings here that you can choose as well. Check that out. She's got an absolute skill to do that. And she must, I don't know how she doesn't burn her uh, wrist and her hand every time. But it's very much, it's, I and mean, it's not luxury dining in any way, but it's very good food, very tasty, very healthy, and it's very reasonably priced. Now walking on inside here, hopefully now, you're gonna see people doing some shopping. I'm gonna try my best to make sure I'm not avoiding people when I walk around here, but they've got all of these holiday chocolates set up right in the front here. Have a look at the Kinder right here at the front. And there's uh, more chocolates again. I might have to do a separate video just of all of the Christmas offerings in the store here. So walking in, you've got the fruit and vegetables right out front. And in December, mandarins, are kind of the seasonal fruit. Oh, and you can see here, this is how uh, raw they are. They've got all the leaves and the twigs still on them. I kind of like the look of them like this, but 109 rubles for a kilo. And this is where I come and get my salads. There's nobody at this salad section today. What's normally? Normally much busier. And off in the distance there is all the cooked chickens, chicken wings, chicken legs. We get roast chickens here quite a lot. But hopefully you'll see now here how busy this place is. This is kind of the uh, absolute busiest hour of the, uh, the week, I think, coming in here. Here's the uh, chicken section and then all the fruit and vegetables kind of go off for quite a fair distance over this way and then off in the distance this way. So yeah, definitely take note everybody what you're watching here. How many people have the traditional trolleys like you see these ones right here and then the baskets, kind of these regular baskets. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people, probably today we kind of see more people with shopping trolleys I think, which is kind of interesting. Um, maybe people are doing their weekly shop today more than their uh, kind of daily shop. But tomatoes galore as usual in Russia. Tomatoes everywhere. It's like, it's like, I don't know, we have a love and passion for tomatoes in Russia. And you can see it's definitely not watermelon season now. Have a look how small they've gone. They're like a, like a grapefruit size watermelon. Back a few months ago, they were kind of <laughs> the size of the whole box here. And now they're barely even a hand, <laughs> one hand size. Oh my gosh. It's very true that everybody's very seasonally shopping for their fruit and vegetables in Russia. Um, yeah, have a look around here. The, all the uh, classics from Russia here, carrots, onions, potatoes, and then cabbage is there and you'll see the deli section off in the distance. And walking down the deli section over here again, this is uh, popular here, all these fish, and these smoked fish, cured fish, and then all of these different sort of hams and meats. But hopefully for a Sunday evening, you can get a sense of how busy it is. And the Russians are coming to buy food. Now, I do get it a lot from people, oh, Globus is, you know, higher priced. It's not for the average Russian to come shopping, but there is a very big cross section of people in this hypermarket. I mean, there is obviously a lot more smaller shops even close to where I live that I can go shopping at, but if you kind of want the selection and the variety, you know, you come here, you can get everything in one store and not have to kind of go to all the little different little stores where you live. Yeah, you can see kind of walking around all of these different sort of 
Christmas offerings. They've kind of really themed all the different parts of the supermarket now. Ready for the holidays, December, January. We're in the meat and cheese section here and they've got all of the, all the wines and champagnes sort of mixed together. I think in the hypermarkets and in all supermarkets in Russia, I think after the fruit and vegetables, I think the bread section is the next most popular place where everybody likes to come and find their favorite bread. And everything's sort of baked in the back of the store here now. It's probably hard to see from all of the shelving right here, but they've got their full line bakery running the whole back of the store. So it's a very popular place to uh, come and buy bread. You know, no one's buying the packaged bread here. You'll see it's actually all in shrink wrap. Years ago, it used to be all uh, unpackaged, but obviously a lot of kind of guidelines come in place to uh, make it more hygienic. And then you'll see here, oh, you can probably see in the back here all of the different breads on that back shelf right there. And then right in front, they've got all of the uh, different cakes. Very nice. Oh, have a look, all these choices. And this is all by weight here, so you just let them know how big a slice you want and off you go. Now, I think this end of the hypermarket or supermarket gives you a good kind of perception of uh, how much they take their holiday shopping seriously. Have a look at this section over here. So this is the seasonal area of the hypermarket where they change this every few months. And they've now got it set up for December and January for the holidays, but so the alcohol section essentially, I'm gonna say quadruples or whatever more than four times is. Have a look at all the choices here. Then on the back wall as well. Now, this is just the seasonal section. If we have a look off to the left here, this is the normal uh, alcohol section over here, which has got all the uh, alcohols, the liquors, the liqueurs, and then all the wines and champagnes. This is the kind of the everyday section. And then <laughs> we'll swing back around again and have a look at just all the seasonal ones that they bring out. So all of these kind of nice packaging you'll see here, you can get the Beluga vodka here with the uh, martini glass. It's, uh, they're all kind of, all orientated around the holidays. And I think we all know Ferrero Rocher pretty well, no matter where we are in the world. And then all of the different chocolates and candies, all the gift box kind of packaging. And as we head off a bit further here, they've got all of the, kind of all the smellies here, all the men's and ladies kind of gift sets, you know, with the shampoos and soaps and body washes in. And this whole section is dedicated to all of the kind of different packagings that you'd give people for the holidays. Now, I do tell my wife to watch these videos, so I wonder if she'll actually watch this and mention it to me at all. But she did mention to me that I need to get myself a Dieppe Moroz suit and do the English Father Christmas. In Russia, you can actually have Dieppe Moroz come to your house and uh, wish the kids like Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And they come dressed up in the full suit here. But uh, he looks a little bit young, the Dieppe Moroz in this one, but what do you think everybody? Should I get one of these and do a bit of dress up? And I think what I'll do, I might kind of just end the video slowly here so you guys can click away if you don't want to watch the last part, but I just thought I'd show the Christmas section or the Christmas market here inside Globus. You can even get yourself the fireplace if you need to. If you've got an apartment and you want to feel like Christmas, they have the, the faux, uh, <laughs> the faux uh, fireplaces. I can't think of the word. And then this isn't quite as big as the one at Ashan, but it does have a lot of choices of things kind of walking around. I think the Asham one's got more choices, but these are pretty good though. We've got all the trees, all the plastic trees back there, you know, and they're just gonna start having all of the real Christmas tree markets as well around Moscow. I noticed from my area, there's two that are gonna be set up, so we're gonna go and check them out at some point. But what do you think? All of this uh, Christmas section. Now, if this sort of section looks a little bit interesting, why is it all roped off and why have they got flowers everywhere? 
because this is the fireworks section of Globus. Yes, you can get fireworks while you're doing your vegetable shopping and your bread shopping and you know, you just put them in your trolley and off you go. There's actually staff that help you and talk about the different fireworks, I guess. And they've even got a sign here letting you know which ones are on special or which are the kind of promotional ones. You can get this 64 firework box. It's kind of crazy. Um, I've never bought fireworks in my life, by the way. So I know it's a big deal in Russia and there's uh, firework markets all over the place, but to get them in the supermarket, that's a little bit uh, of an extra thing to do when you're coming shopping, right? Okay, everybody, I'm gonna end the video right here. I really do hope you liked today's video and answering the question, do Russians go shopping? Do Russians come to supermarkets? And I'm pretty sure we know the answer, yes. Having a look at how many people we saw today walking around. So thanks for watching. If you did like it, you can give it a thumbs up if you like. Post a comment about something that you noticed in the video, maybe some of the different stores some of the change of names. Let me know what you think of all those different changes of names. And then here in Globus, what do you think of this uh, hypermarket? Do you want me to do a separate video maybe? I can do another walk around here if you like this kind of thing. All right, I'm out of here. If you want to post a comment, again, let me know what you think of the video. Okay, I put another video for you to watch right after this one. You can check that out right away now if you like, maybe an older video from the channel. And I'm off on another adventure. Bye, everybody.